What is up everyone and welcome back to another live coding challenge video. In this one I'm going to be trying to build a memory game using HTML. Um, if you don't know what a memory game is, basically it's where you have like a 4x4 four four grid of squares and when you click on a square it flips it over or changes it so that you can try to find the other square that matches it. And once you've found all the matches the game ends. <laughs> so that is what we're going to try to build today. Let's see how hard it is. So I'm first making an index file and I'm also going to host this folder. Port 8080. While that's running or loading up. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and make a styles.css and a main.javascript. I guess you can call it index.javascript. And inside my index, I'm just going to go ahead and import that link. I'm going to say link CSS, and that is styles. And then in my body, I'm just going to go ahead and import that script link. Script source um, index.js. All right, let me minimize this as well and make sure that I can hit my web page. Cool. Prints out high. So what I like to do first is um, for these type of little challenges, it's easier if I start with something I can visually see. So I start with the UI, right? So I want to create a 4x4 four four grid of boxes or cards or something. So what I can do is I'll just make four rows. That's my four rows. And then inside each row, I can make four columns. So div class, and I'm going to call it a card for each one. So let's make sure I have the brackets set up correctly. So three, four, save that, copy this stuff over, and my command click, paste in, and now we have four rows with each with four cards. Now obviously you won't see anything in the UI if I refresh because I don't have anything displayed in these divs. So let's actually go to our styles, and we have a row class. And we also have a card class. Uh, card, not cards. So I don't know if we need to render row. It takes the line center. See how this works. And for the card, I'm going to say display inline block. Um, I'm going to give it some hard coded width and height and a background color of gray. Uh, gray would be E, not 3. Let's see what happens if we do this. Nothing happens. Let's make sure that if we open up our terminal here, or console, whatever it's called, go into our body, we have rows, we have cards. Unfortunately, they all have no styles applied, so I wonder if maybe we forgot to import something. The style sheet styles.css make sure this javascript is printing out too let's see don't know what happened there i really don't know what happened maybe it just had a caching issue i don't think you need dot slash here but i'll add it anyway cool so we have a four by four grid and basically that's just divs wrapped in divs and one thing we want to do is when we hover over these cells, we probably change the background cover color. So I'll say cursor is a pointer, it's just to give some feedback that you're over it. And then hover, I'm going to make the background color, you know, I'm going to make the border something. You can do negative so it doesn't mess up your, your flow. Now I guess you can't. Let's see if this messes it up. See, the only issue with the border is that as you hover over stuff, you see how my cards jump around. So there is a trick to do that. I forget how what it is. The inner border. Ah, uh, let's look it up. So CSS inner border. Let's see what the internet tells us. 
use CSS, CSS box shadow. Um, let's try this. See what happens. Nothing wrong with copying code, right? No shame, no shame. Cool. Kind of, kind of what we want. It's a little thick. There we go. As you, uh, so as I'm hovering over, you notice that the boxes don't move. That's good. Anyway. So that's just a little bit of feedback for the user so they know what card they're about to click on. Um, now at this point, what we could do is just add a couple of colors to the cards. So if there's four by four, we're gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We need eight different colors. So I'm just gonna add eight different styles here, our classes. Probably a better way to do this. Let's see, red, green, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Red, green, blue, orange, cyan, pink, yellow, teal. That should be a nice, nice amount of colors. Okay, so in all these, I'll just pick two random ones, red, Blue, green, teal, cyan, oh, I totally forgot there's another row up here, yellow, pink, what am I missing? Green, blue, orange, cyan, yellow, pink, teal, teal. Red, green, blue, pink, teal, cyan. I don't know. All right, so there's a color missing. I don't remember what color it is. We got red, we got green, we got blue, we got orange. Wait, do we have orange? I don't think we got orange. All right, so these last two cards, let's just put orange on them. <coughs> All right, so we have a four by four grid. Looks nice. We created some colors and we applied it to every single cell. Now with the memory game, one thing you have to remember is that the colors don't show until after you click on the two cells. So what we could do here is just attach a color hidden to all these. I'll just say, oh yeah, I'll say color hidden. And because this is after the pink class, we could say color hidden background color is none. Or inherit, you might have to do. And I'll just say background color is the gray. How about that? All right, so now the next step is we got the colors working. They're all hidden. As you click on these cells, we need to do some type of functionality. So you could add a on-click callback to all these. And if you're a beginner, that might make the most sense. So let's just go ahead and do that. And I'll add a, I'll add a function here. So function on card clicked. And that is going to do something. I'll just print out clicked here. And I'll print out the target that we clicked. I think it's e.current target. We shall find out what it really is. Let me split this, minimize this. All right, so on click, and we're going to call our function with the event. Let me just try something. I think you gotta pass the events in. 
<clears throat> All right, so we clicked on it and then we get the card that we clicked. And then if you wanted to actually get more information about it, so let's see if I say const target is equal to that console log target dot class name. All right, so let's say we actually wanted to like get the colors. So you see here we got card pink color hidden. And that might not be the best approach to figure out the colors. So we might revisit that. But let's just do something simple, right? Let's just do baby steps. The first thing you do is when you click on a card, you want to remove the hidden class. So in JavaScript, I don't think there's a really good way to remove classes. So what you need to do is you have to like splice it out of your um, your string, right? So target dot class name dot replace. Let me go back to one view. You have more real estate to see. So replace um, car a color hidden with nothing, and I'm gonna trim it. Just to remove the uh, trailing space. Now when I click it, the color shows up because we removed that hidden class. So if we apply the same technique to everything, we could probably get this working. Now there might be an easier way so that I don't have to add an on-click handler to every single div. Um, let me look at that. JavaScript on-click anything of class. You can do this in jQuery super easily with like a live event or on event, but here you'd have to fetch all the elements and then you'd have to add a click handler to them. Well, get elements by class name. Let's just do that because I don't want to muddy up. Hmm. You know, I don't know what's easiest for a beginner. Maybe just having the click handler directly on the DOM makes more sense. Because that's what you do in React or Vue. So let's just do that. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy pasta all of this everywhere. Save it. And at that point, all of these cards should be clickable. Go back, refresh. Make sure we can click on everything. It looks like we can. Okay, so at this point, <clears throat> how does the game work, right? We click on a card, it shows it. We click on another card, and then we check, is the color matching, or is it not matching? If it's not matching, we maybe show it for a second and hide it. If it is matching, we need to pretty much prevent it from being clicked again, get rid of color hidden, and say that it's done. So let's, that's a lot of stuff that we just talked about. Let's try to write that out in pseudocode. If we have already clicked a card, check if the new card matches the old card's color. If we haven't clicked a card, keep track of the card, display it color. All right, let's, let's start with that stuff. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to say clicked card is equal to null. And say if we haven't clicked the card, so if not clicked card, then what we want to do is go ahead and show the color. And then we need to keep track of that target that we just clicked. And then I'm going to say else if if we have already clicked the card, then we need to do something else. We need to again show the card color. In fact, this happens every time, so let's just put that there. <clears throat> so if we've already clicked it, then what we want to do is check if we put these inside the actual if statements. So one thing we could do is, um, it'd probably be nice if we changed this. It, it turns out that it's always card 
space the color card space the color we could probably add data attributes to these and that might make it a bit easier um could do this and then I could just simply grab that data color and check versus having to take the string and split it and get index one I guess we could just do that so give me a second let me just see how quick I can add that in All right, so now we got to go through all the colors. We got pink, we got yellow, we got orange. Orange is this. Red, teal, blue, green, red, pink, blue, pink. All right, we got four more left. Cyan, yellow, green cyan all right so at this point what we can do is we should be able to actually get that attribute which i forget how you do that in javascript i think it's like target dot get attribute data color we'll google this javascript get dom data attribute Here it is. So it's just a get attribute call. So we can say target get attribute data of color. And now when we click on our cards, I refresh the page, it prints out the color, right? Pink, yellow, blue, etc. So that will help us be, without having to do a lot of string logic to like split up the class. Because if you wanted to do that logic, you'd be screwed if you ever like change the order of these. So I think it's better just to have the color on the data, like as a data attribute. So anyway, let's um, let's hide the evidence of me taking stuff from Stack Overflow, and uh, let's get back to the code. So if we have clicked the card already, we need to check if the clicked card dot get attribute data color is equal to the current target of get attribute data color then we need to do something and what we need to do is we need to pretty much mark them as done so I could say clicked car dot set I'm assuming there's a set attribute because uh, data done true I might need to google this you know I could just add a class done plus equals base done I'll do the same thing for target. All right, so now this, what we're doing is we're pretty much adding an ability to say, I can't click the cards anymore. So in here, what I could do is if target dot class name dot should be able to say includes, but we'll see. That might be a string method. If it includes that, then just return. We don't want to be able to click anything if it already has been you know completed. And then inside done, we could say um, card any card that is done cursor is going to be default um, and we probably want to get rid of the hover too so let me get rid of the hover on this box shadow or like a nun yeah we'll try stuff out if you click it, you can still hover over it. Um, but I don't think I was able to click on it again. Let's see. You know what? We need to do this. We don't want to be able to click on it if we already clicked on it once. So if target is equal to clicked card or that,
<laughs> you know what? We could just add the done here. Hey, sorry. So at this point in the video, my audio cut out, so I'm kind of doing a voiceover right now. But basically, I'm just moving these done things um, to happen every time on line 16. And you'll see here that after I click the box or the car the first time, I can no longer click it again. So we fix that issue. And we can click on different uh, cards and have different colors show up. But there's a bug now where I've clicked two cards and now it did not go away. Like the card should vanish again after I've clicked two cards that aren't the same color. So basically I'm just adding another if statement where I can check if I've clicked two cards that are not the same color, something prints out to the console. And then if I click cards that are the same color, like these two oranges, a different console log prints out. So what I'm going to do basically is if the cards are not of equal value or color, I'm just going to do a timeout of half a second. And I'm going to pretty much make sure that the colors or the cards are set back to hidden. And I'm also going to, I think, remove the class done. And my audio is actually going to come back in in a second. So here you go. With an empty string. Just go ahead and trim that. And I'll do the same thing with target. But if they are equal, then we just don't do anything, maybe? Let's see. Cards are not equal, and that should have switched back to... <clears throat> should have removed the done from these. Color hidden. You know what, I probably need to uh, add back color hidden and get rid of done. Let's try that. Let's just add back color hidden. I should fix one of our issues. I think it still has done on the class. Oh, da, 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 da. okay. I need to set that equal to the class name. I love auto formatting. It makes it code so much easier. So I click on the two cards. After half a second, they go back. Uh oh, what's going on here? After you click on both, go back. For some reason, one of them is not getting sent back. And the reason that is, is because I think we're keeping track of clicked card here. So we need to just definitely reset this back to null. And we need to reset this back to null as well. In fact, if you notice that this is just duplicate logic, we could just, um, you know what? This if statement is not needed. You notice it just has a console log and that's it. So what I could do is just delete the if statement and just do that and see what happens. Our property class name of null. Okay, the issue is is because I shared it here. You know what? I do need that. So if the things are not equal, then we need to set a timeout and then show it after half a second and then clear out click card only after that timeout. Um, and if they are equal, then we just clear the card. And there's probably a hundred ways I could do this. All right, so now we can keep on clicking on the same cards and not have any issues. Now let's try two reds. Boom. So they kept them. Two oranges. Deal. Uh-oh. Now the issue here is that I clicked before that 500 milliseconds was up. 
So I think what we want to do is just prevent clicking. So if prevent click, then we don't want to click on anything. And we want to add prevent click here to false. But if you clicked on the two same cards, you set it equal to true. And this will help with that whole 50, 500 millisecond timer. So I think if I just do this, can't click anymore. Why is that? <sighs> Prevent click through. If they are, oh, I put it in the wrong one. Duh. Man, what is going on here? If the cards are not equal. Oh, I totally screwed this up. If the cards are equal, the then we do this and we prevent the click here. And then when it's done with the timeout, we set it to false. I probably shouldn't have re reversed those if statements. It just kind of confused me. So what the heck? All right, let's take a step back and try to understand what's going on. We haven't clicked on a card already. Then we set the target. We clicked on a card and the cards are equal in terms of their color. We need to prevent any more clicking until this timeout fires. Prevent click is true and then prevent click is false. And then we are not allowed to do a click if it's true or if it's already been clicked or if it's done. So what is going on here? Click on two of the same color. Click on two others that are not the same color. And that should have changed back. All right, so the issue is if you click on two cards that are not the same color, which is this else here, then it's not going back in hiding them. Wait, dude, I'm getting so confused. Oh my gosh. If they're not the same color, that's when we show them for like half a second and then they go back to whatever. If we have clicked on the same ones, Sorry, I'm just confusing myself, and I'm probably confusing you as well. Alright, I think that fixed the logic. <clears throat> so, I mean, one of the last things you could do, um, there's, there's a, probably a ton of stuff you could do here. But I'm going to just keep track of combos found is equal to zero. And every time you find a combo, I'm going to increment combos found. I'm going to say if combos found is equal to eight alert, you win. This is a uh, cheap way to like have a uh, score screen. So if I do all that over again, I don't, I don't remember where all the colors are. Maybe I should practice this game more. Memory is not the best. Green and green, yellow and yellow. All right, it says we win. So, I mean, that is basically the gist of the game. You could probably add some logic to randomly create these. Or you could randomly go through and change the colors um, on the start of the, the map. And I guess I should do that to do you all a, a solid. So one thing we could do is just grab all the cards. Okay, so first off, let's just have an array of colors. And we want to loop through all the colors. What do we want to do? Loop through all the colors and then keep grabbing elements that have not been granted a color.
Hmm. Pink, yellow, red, cyan, blue, teal, orange, green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are eight different colors. So what we can do here is loop through. So cards is equal to document dot query selector all. And I could say give me all the cards. And then I could for each card. Actually for every color, I'm going to say for let color of colors. Then we want to grab two cards out of that cards list randomly. So I'm going to say const card A is equal to cards. I don't know if I, I might have to convert this to a list. I don't know if this is the correct way to do it, but we'll find out. Um, cards of cars int math.random time cards that length. So grab me a random card, grab me another random card after we splice it. So uh, card, I'll say const a index is equal to that. All right, first we want to get a random index. And then we want to get that card. And then we want to splice out that from cards. So cards.splice card a index one. And then we do the same thing for card b. I think this is how you could probably do this, but card b index. Same deal. Splice out that. Then we have card B. Now for the first card, we just want to say card A dot class name um, plus equals color. Or, um, yeah, color. Probably do a space like this. We'll do the same thing down here. So both of those cards need to have the same color. And then they both need a dat data attribute. So set attribute data color. And I'm going to pass it color here. Card A's color. This is card B's color. And if we did this right, which I don't know if we did, the main idea is that we can get rid of all the colors that are hard coded in this HTML. Oh, there's so many. And then all the data colors can also be removed because we're going to dynamically add them on. So let's cross our fingers and hope this doesn't break everything, which it probably will. Every time I refresh the page, they're different colors. And I have to play and figure out the sequences all over again. Holy moly, I'm so bad at this. There we go. Now refresh it again. If I click the same spots, there's no red. So that is one way you can build a memory game in HTML and CSS. And that wraps up this video tutorial. So if you have any additional project ideas, be sure to post it in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon because I'm going to have more videos like this, hopefully every day, but we'll see. And be sure to like this video if it helps you out or if you found it interesting to watch. My name is Cody Seibert and again, thank you so much for watching and happy coding.